Um, okay, so my talk is about the, about a different type of optical clock. Um, so the journey of time precision is very very long. So it starts from an hour hourglass to nowadays we have optical lattice clock, which has a stability of 10 to the power minus 18. So what triggers uh, this development of uh, of passion for precision is is that by improving our time measurements, we are actually uh, improving many things. So for example, we have many applications like we are improving our global uh, gro uh, global navigation system GPS. And uh, we can gen uh, we can synthesize many stable frequency sources, which nowadays we use in our lab to synchronize many uh, many devices. And uh, we can do uh, more accurately precision measurement to measure to determine physical constants like Rydberg constants, alpha, um, hyper uh, sorry fine structure constants, etc. So all this invention has been made possible with the invention of frequency comb, which is nothing but a pulse laser which emits a train of pulse. And if you do a Fourier transform of a pulse train, then you will see that it's, uh, it's, it generates discrete frequency lines in frequency domain. And these lines are separated by a repetition rate. So here each of these lines can be represented by this formula. Um, yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, can be represented by this formula uh, n into f repetition rate plus fco. So here you can. So what makes frequency comb so special is that the all these lines are in terahertz domain, like in optical domain, and it gives a link between an optical domain to an RF RF domain. So you can measure optical frequencies because there are no photo detector in optical domain. So you can measure the optical frequencies by measuring actually RF frequencies. So now. Uh, how can we build an optical clock with this? So in order to build any clock, we need an oscillator. So here for optical clock, we are using directly the laser. And then you need to interact it with, a, you need a frequency standard, which are atoms in our case, because atoms are, um, atoms are less disturbed by the environment. So when, so depending on how well your frequency of the oscillator is tuned to the atom's natural frequency, it, uh, the atoms make a transition from one quantum state to another quantum state. Now depending on how many atoms has made this, uh, made this, um, made this uh, transfer, we measure it and we apply this to feedback on the frequency of the laser so that it stays tuned to F0. Now, once we have a stabilized laser, we use uh, we need to measure the frequency. So for this, the frequency comb comes to play. So we make it, we beat it with frequency comb, the nearest mode of the frequency comb, and then depending on the by measuring the beat frequency, we can calculate the what is the frequency of the laser which has been interact with atom. So now uh, all the optical clocks has been characterized by measuring Allan deviation, which is nothing but the, the ratio of delta f, which is the frequency fluctuation, because the measurement system induces some noise, and the uh, f0, which is a natural frequency. So that here you can see that by choosing a higher oscillation frequency, you can actually increase the stability. So that is why there is a very drastic increase in the stability from atomic clock to the optical clock, because atomic clock uses a microwave transition, uh, microwave oscillators, which is uh, 10 to power 9, and um, oscillate. I mean the the, the optical clock uses a laser, which is terahertz, which is in terahertz domain. So it's a factor of thousand better. Okay, so there is another class of uh, atomic clock, which is uh, which is more which is more uh, into a miniaturizing system, and it uses a coherent population trapping, which is a two-photon phenomena. So here you can see that uh, there are two lines, the red and blue, and they, when the frequency of these two-phase coherent light, they matches exactly with the hyperfine splitting. In this case, it's a rubidium atom, so it's 6.8 gigahertz. Then there is a generation of very narrow, uh, narrow, narrow spectrum. It appears in the absorption spectrum. Here you can see that this this is as narrow as 180 hertz, and it of course depends on how coherent these two lasers are and other experimental factors. So this is one of such clock which is built in Technion by uh, one of our former member uh, here, which has a stability of 10 to the power minus 11. So what he did is he used a microwave clock because it's a microwave, uh, it's a microwave clock. So he used a microwave synthesizer, which adds a modulation to the laser. So here he used a Vixel. And uh, then the two side bands, the frequency of the two side bands are tuned such by tuning the microwave such that it hits the, exactly the hyperfine state of hyperfine uh, detuning, 
and then he generates CPT, and then this is used to lock the microwave synthesizer. So it generates a very stable 10 megahertz output, which has a stability of 10 to the power minus 11. So what I want to do is that I want to do a similar thing, but instead of using a microwave oscillator, I want to use a terahertz oscillator. And frequency comb itself is a terahertz oscillator. So this is how it looks like. So what I want to do is I want to use a frequency comb. Then I want to frequency double, because our frequency comb is at 15, 15 nanometers. And then the two of the lines of the frequency comb, they, they are, I mean, so I want to tune the repetition rate such that the two lines are exactly separated by 6.8 gigahertz. And then I can generate CPT, uh, CPT uh, peak. And that will be used to lock the repetition rate of the comb. But now here there is a problem because out, so frequency comb is a, has a very broad spectrum. That means there are many lines. But out of all these lines, I want to actually measure one line. So which is so I cannot do just by putting a photo detector there. So in order to do that, what uh, what I'm doing is that I'm using I'm coming with uh, another comb, which is slightly uh, which has a slightly different repetition rate. So now due to the slightly different repetition rate, each of the second comb is beating with the each of the line of the first comb. So then it's generating a RF beat in RF domain by a, by a dis, uh, by a difference between the repetition rate. So that's how I can actually separate. I can separate the information which is encoded in each of the lines. And uh, so this is what our plan is. And this is how it looks like. So I try, I put the rubidium atom into the path of one of the comb. And OK, right now it's not very nice. But you can see that still I can see some dips due to the rubidium atom. So I, it's just first measurement. So I'm trying to improve on it. OK, so but just to give you an idea, how does it look like? So yeah. OK, so this is how my setup looks like. So I have a two comb, um, two combs. And uh, so these, they are frequency double. Then, uh, then one comb, it passed through the rubidium atom to generate the CPT transition. And then they are mixed in the beam splitter. And then I generate error signal. And then it, is, it will be used to uh, lock the comb, the first comb. So the lasers which I'm using is that, as I said, we are using two combs. So one is the commercial uh, laser which we bought from Menlo Systems, and which has a reputation rate of 250 megahertz. And the second one is the home-built mode lock laser, which we built ourselves. So it has a, so how it works is like it is a gain medium, which you are modulating by AC frequency. And you are modulating very, because you want to have the reputation rate close to this one. So modulating with the uh, with, uh, 250, I mean 250 minus 50 kilohertz frequency. And then you feed back. So this external cavity. So you feed back uh, half of the light into the into the laser, and then you generate a laser output. So now with this, so this is how it looked like. So it's a cavity. It has very long cavity because you have to match 250 megahertz, and so this generates 20 picosecond pulses. Um, because by using active mode lock, this is the maximum. Like you can only generate a uh, few picoseconds pulses. But this is good enough for us. Um, yeah. So one of okay wait. So one of the challenges is that, so in order to produce a stable beat, we need to actually stabilize a second laser as well to at least to few megahertz. So for that, uh, we developed our own scheme. Uh, so <clears throat> what, where we can, where we have flexibility to lock the to lock the pulse laser without using an, another CW laser directly on the hyphenous cavity. So how it works is that you have a pulse laser, you shine it through the cavity. We are using cavity as a filter because the only light which are resonant with the cavity can only pass through, and then it's detected. So how it works is, yeah. So uh, yeah. So how it works is that. So here is the. So around the resonance, the, there is a phase change of uh, minus pi by two to pi by two, and uh, we add a small modulation to detect this phase, and this uh, gives us a derivative signal which is shown there. And this is used. This is derivative signals are very ideal to use for the locking purpose. So that's how we feedback on the external cavity of the laser, which I shown before. Okay, so so okay, so by after locking we can reduce the line width by a factor of four. But we are trying to improve on that. So this is to 30 kilohertz, but it's uh, good enough to proceed with the idea. Okay, so now with uh, these, with all these, uh, uh, stable, with all these stable, uh, stable uh, configurations, we are hoping that we can uh, we can get the stability of our clock by uh, by uh, 10 to the power minus 15. But uh, since the comb has many lines, so there might be perturbation caused by other lines uh, due to the light shift because they are very close in frequency, like separated by 250 megahertz. 
So, so we are expecting that they might can uh, cause, they might broaden the CPT spectrum, which can reduce a factor of 10. But this is something we have to try. And also, there are in literature there are methods to compensate for that. So yeah. So right now we are in a development process. So we have just managed to stabilize our second laser, and now we are looking for CPT. So with this, I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you.